Hey, this is Greg Hawks. Welcome to another Sourcing in Real Life. I saw a couple of posts from Brian Fink and some other folks around a tool called OctoHunt, and I was taking another look at it because I'd, I'd actually have heard about it, but uh, I had forgotten about it. Um, but it's a, it's a great resource because it ranks the, the contributor levels, the number of repositories by people, uh, developers and engineers on, on GitHub. And I, I definitely see the great potential with this because you definitely want to, to go where people live. You want to go to people that are more active in the community and things like that, especially in an open source environment like we kind of work. Um, and, I, and I saw, uh, you know, yeah, you could pull a, a pretty general list. Um, and I actually was just messing around with data miner and was able to build a recipe that was able to pull, that was able to pull a lot of this information in uh, outside of using something more developer based like web scraper, which you could u literally use to click in and, and extract the information off of each profile. But I was just going for quick and dirty yesterday and I wanted to share the recipe with everybody because I think it'll be you know, really helpful, especially as more people are, jump onto this website and, and use it to look on GitHub, which is not the easiest search. <laughs> so, so basically what you do is you, you pull your list and I actually have another extension that I use called, and I think I heard from this from uh, Dean DaCosta, scroll the bottom. He did a quick video on, on how to use this. And basically what this will do is it'll scroll to the very bottom of the page. So in other words, you're building your pipeline, you're building your long list of people, and you just click this button to go scroll to the, bo the bottom instead of scrolling down all the way and then waiting it to, to parse. It's just a little bit of a time saver there. Um, so I was looking for Scala engineers. I'm highlighting what I want to, an entry that I want to scrape going to get similar similar data miner and it pulls up the, the famous window that sometimes intimidates people and if you go to the public tab if you go to the public tab if you look for octo hunt scraper or you just put in my last name and run it you'll be able to pull the information in let me see if I can show you this so uh, I had 33 profiles pulled it in pretty quickly I've added columns for repos, just followers, GitHub link, which is the direct profile link, the homepage, and contact information for those people that have their email address. Now you have to be signed in to GitHub in order to see some of these Gmail addresses or, or email addresses. Um, a lot of times, I mean, it's on their profile if you just sign in. So I know some people are using like API stuff, but I, like I said, I was just going for the quick and dirty today. And let me do something like general based like Java and show you how quickly this can work, especially if in your, you're in a rush. So quite a few people, right? And click on scroll to bottom and you'll see my little screen thing keeps going down. Let's go down. Okay, and I got back down to the, the bottom of the profile page pretty quickly, right? I was still, it's still thinking, okay, well, hey, I'll, I'll take that. Okay, highlight, right click, data miner, get similar. And there's that public recipe for everybody. And boom, how do we, how many do we have? We get all the information. I've got 150 people in a couple of seconds, right? So, uh, and, and yes, obviously you're gonna have to do more research. You're gonna have to look them up on, because GitHub doesn't have a lot of profile information. I would almost instantly go to, to LinkedIn or some people will take this list and put it into Zap Info and enrich it. So whatever your method is, or, or hire a tool for that matter, whatever your method is, however you research, um, you'll have to do that so you, you can qualify, hey, this person is what we're looking for, they have the tech stack, they have the experience level, all that stuff. So that's a piece that, that, that's always important. And usually that takes me more time than actually finding a list or pipeline of people. So the other thing I wanted to mention, because I was diving around some of my 
uh, custom search engines, I noticed that I hadn't built one for Contact Out and I thought I did. So Contact Out is another resource that you can use. Um, most of what I see on Contact Out is, is pulled from LinkedIn. But if you don't have a LinkedIn recruiter seat, this is a good additional pipeline or an alternative search to do to find uh, other candidates. So let me just put in, um, let me find mechanical engineer so what I can get. I always like, I always like trying mechanical engineer on anything. So with this, it pulls mechanical engineers and I've got a long list of them. The, and I've said this before, one of the disadvantages of using CSEs is you can only pull 100 results. But as you can see, it gets it, it gets some information. And I also have this tab here. If you click on the links tab, it will pull people that have a direct link to a profile or a direct link to a personal web page. So, I mean, there's three different links here. This looks like to a company page, but that's probably, that might be a, a personal web page. Let me see if I can find a better example. This might work better with tech, with uh, the, the tech industry. Let's look in the, let's look in the Boston area. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a Weebly site. That's a personal website. So that's a, that's a good example. So not an exact science, but none of what we do usually is. But I wanted a short list of people that I could directly reach out to if I need to, especially if I'm in a rush. And another thing that I created that I had forgotten about because I, I, I do build a lot of stuff and sometimes forget about it, is I actually have a scraper uh, data miner recipe built for CSEs. So if you're even in a bigger rush and you need to pull this information into a spreadsheet real quick because you, you're trying to leave the office by four and trying to get to your kids and stuff, this will help. So and typically I try to put my name or sourcing in Relive or, or GH or something on these recipes to help people find it but you can also scroll down the public list and find it too. And what we got here, we've got a name, we got a link, we've got a couple of links, it looks like additional info. And yeah, you can use Excel to clean some of this up, but the most, and it looks like I might need to do some adjusting on this too. But the most important thing is you have the information. You have the information somewhere and you can utilize it for tracking purposes. I mean, this, to, to organize this, it's a simple replace function on Excel. And the mo most important thing that I want to have is the link so I can get back to it if I ever need to. And you have additional info, info here that can help you get through the screening process. Oh, I actually pulled a lot of it. Okay. Well, hey, that works. Did I pull the whole thing? I pulled the whole thing? I, and I'm always trying to tinker this and make it more viable. But, you know, sometimes when you've got a full-time job, you can't get to everything. But this, get, this gives you enough information. I mean, I can tell these people are mechanical engineers. I can tell kind of what they do. I can kind of tell what level they are and so that I can take this information and then go do additional research, whether it's pulling this information into another tool like Zamp Info or, or, or just straight looking them up on LinkedIn and see what I can find. Um, you know, these, all this stuff helps. So, and this is another example of how combining different processes, different resources, can help you in your overall, overall sourcing process. And that's why we do all this stuff. So, hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing and sharing and keeping sourcing open source.